What's up, guys? Welcome back to Intern and Son. In this episode, me and Dave talk about dating our cousins, ending our shit, and just overall how sad we are. Enjoy the show. See you next week. Give it a clap again. All right. So. Uh, are we doing this? We're on right now? Yeah, we're ready to go. Dear Lord. It is episode number three. Number three. We made it three weeks in a row with one day missed number- because we both had uh, events, and I know what you were doing. Yeah, but nobody nobody cares about- I care. Like, why- why it's Monday, it's not gonna Sunday. Get, it's going to get pushed to Tuesday, like pushed out on Tuesday either way, so no one cares what time I know, we do it. You went to a festival on Sunday. No, I didn't. What are you talking Saturday about? Saturday you went. Oh, Saturday I went and got drunk. Yeah, you went to a beer fest. Yeah, Saturday I went and did debaucherous things. I came into work today, and I was like, hey, friend, did I um, pick you up? And he goes, no, but you carried my friend around and got yelled at by a cop. I go, oh. Solid, right. dude. Well, then, yeah, that sounds about right. Solid Saturday. So, yeah, I don't really know what happened. Um, apparently, I called some chick Bono. <laughs> Did she look like Bono? She had orange sunglasses on that were round, and I go, do you have oh, the then same? You have, yeah, you have full. I go, do you have the same eye condition as Bono? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know Bono had an eye condition. I, I didn't either. Oh, you just I wear it? You just think yeah. Share the same. So shades. yeah, this is episode three of Intern and Son, this lovely podcast that we have. We're going. doing it. I'm amazed. My that stomach is rumbling. Made and it I'm, to episode three. I'm so hungry, Dave. I haven't eaten all day. We can't do this ever again on a Monday because we were just saying it's a very like Monday Monday. We're very it's off. Late in the day, it's just a horrible idea to and ever I, do yeah. this again. So um, we're gonna try and do our best. We will. And uh, how do you want to kick it off the show? Do you want to get into? I went to college. Wait, what? I went to college this weekend. <laughs> Every year, once a year, I make it a point to go to college to make it seem like I'm not missing out. Where'd you go this weekend? I went to my friend's college in New York. What college? I don't want to say where she goes. Who cares? She goes to SUNY. I guess there's a lot of branches of SUNY. Oh, okay. And so you went and visited just to remind yourself you're okay with not being there? I just there? need, um, once a year, I like to be around a, a plethora of people my age. Because okay. I don't get that very often anymore. You know? And so what were your takes from it? Like, I'm curious. Like, I hated it. So you're, so was it, it's just a nice reassurance that you, you're like, I'm good not being yes, there. Yes, I, I, yeah, you're exactly right. I'm like, I made a good choice because there are too many people here and it's just not my, not my Not your scene? Yeah, plus. Is it, is it just too busy for you? It actually wasn't busy. It was just, I don't, not my thing. I don't know. I like to go back to my own space, which I know is not like how the real world works. No, that that's it, you. Everyone should have their own space to go back to you. Yeah, which is not a thing in college. Not yeah, at all. You don't have a lot of space. No, nope. you have to get comfortable with like never having. When you need a moment to yourself, that's probably the last time you'll get a moment to yourself. Yeah, you're done. So good for you. Thanks. That's man. awesome. I went to college. College, man. I'm uh, shook four people's hands. I made it a point. I said, Sarah, I want to shake people's hands today. And I shook hands. As a, like a greeting? Yeah. Do you not shake hands usually? No, well, I just haven't met a 19-year-old in a long time, you know? Well, do 19-year-olds not shake hands? No, I just like haven't met someone my age in a long time. Like since I was in school. We got to get you out in the world, dude. That's what I did on Saturday. And then... And, what'd you, and you went... Actually, you went to New York City on Sunday too, right? Yeah. So this was what I was going to talk to you about because, first of all, well, let me get into that after this. What? Right before we started this podcast, you are 19 and we need to we need to get your mother on at one point. Okay. Your mother called me to make sure that you were here safely at the studio. She's just looking out for me. The dude. fact that your mother had to call me, we need to have a, a like an intervention. I know. Um. You know when they have the big scissors and they cut the they ribbon, cut ribbon for yeah. the grand openings? We need to have that, but for like her umbilical cord to you. Yeah, Because you're not 19 cut. and it needs to just be shit. And you yeah. need to uh, be allowed to drive more than 30 minutes away without getting a phone call like, are you yeah. there? Of course, I'm an ass and I tell her that you died. So Yeah, it was a long drive. So anyway, so you went to New York City with who? It was just it was just me and I met my friend there who goes to school there. Oh, I thought you went with like your mom and them. Oh, it's in New York City, yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. And so my question to you is why do you hate people so much? What do you are you even talking about? 
Because I was talking to your mother. Fuck off, Dave. <laughs> Fuck off. I knew she would tell you. I almost kicked her teeth in, No, dude. I mean, I actually didn't ask that many questions because I didn't want to know from no, her. No, I was I, done. She, I had it up she to said, here, She dude. said that everyone at some point in the trip was just, like, complaining and... I'm just curious why. <laughs> I sorry. I cannot, why you I'm do not like going on another trip. Why you do not many. like people so much? It's not. If you can hang, hang. If you can't hang, get out. What dude. does that mean? Just shut up. Like if there's no if there's no reason to scream, don't scream. What happened? <laughs> I literally don't know any details. I, I hate sixteen year olds. Ah. That's the majority of my audience. Sorry. <laughs> but when they're just screaming for no reason and they're laughing so hard, like it's not even a laugh anymore. It's like you're just doing this for attention. So what you're telling me is you don't like when other people are enjoying a No, good I time. hate it. <laughs> Bring I, it down here. I just love that you're so angsty all the time. I'm like, not. Like when other people are really enjoying themselves, you're just like out. I can be you're cool. Out. I can chill in a corner with my hood up and just not, I can just be fine. I can be fine in a space. What's wrong with being the hood off and being a part of that though? Not, that Not you? No. Are you when, fucking when thing, So when things are going really fun for the whole group, you're like, I got to be in the corner. Yeah. I just like to chill, dude. That leads me to, I don't like being in water, I found out. What? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that this is I don't the like being thing. underwater. I found that out this summer. Why? I don't know. Do you freak out? Yeah. I like to be able to breathe well, I on mean, my own terms. Generally speaking, everyone likes to breathe. Yeah. Unless, whatever. I don't know. Um. So... You get like anxiety underwater. I maybe I don't know. Is it that? Is it that? I just like to be able to breathe whenever I want to, and I feel like huh. water would restrict me from that. How, did you find? It, didn't you go like scuba diving? Or? No, I've never been scuba diving. Oh, I, well, I don't want to because I don't like being underwater. I tell you what, I don't understand snorkeling, but that's that's another. <laughs> I don't get it either. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't get <laughs> how like snorkeling what? is a thing. I don't get it either. Like just. You know those old, like, 90s comedians that are like, what's up with airline food? Yeah. That's how I feel about snorkels. What's up with snorkeling? <laughs> like, how do you breathe? I, I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> like, just, ah. <laughs> ah, snorkel. Ah. Yeah. So I was never a comedian in the 90s, so this is my opportunity. But, uh, yeah. huh. I almost kicked my mom's teeth in, in New York. But I, it's funny how it all ended up, because at the end of the day, we all got off on the wrong train station, and I had to save the day with an Uber. I mean, that sounds about right. Yeah. I feel like you're a very with it young lad i get how things work and when some people just don't get how things work i don't want to be a part of it so i don't know maybe maybe you're like this so this is how i feel about it i used to go to new york city all the time on my own yeah I, that's what i do i dated a girl in like long island so i used to go and so i used to have to take new the York. bus to new york city and i used to have to take like the train and the subway throughout and all this yeah. but i did it all on my own and i was your age actually Whew. Years ago. Oh, um, God. But so then when I used to go to New York City with other people and they try to tell me where, how to get to things and this and that, I used I'm to done. get pissed off. Yeah. So I can imagine you. There's like, a method to it. Yeah, because I'm so used to, that yeah. was the other thing. When I used to go to New York City, I used to have my backpack and my headphones and I would just. Like, just do it. You go through and, the motions. Instead, when you're with a crew, you have to like wait for them. You know what? Yeah. I kind of get it. I think I just don't like traveling with other people besides myself. Even though you want to go to Europe and you're inviting your mom. She's not coming anymore because through the airport, I'm solid. I'm through at my gate 20 minutes tops. I'm like, I'm there. But when I'm with Amy Gray, it's a, we had to stop at McDonald's. So it's one of those things of like, you just, you want to have to worry about you and no one else because you yeah. got your shit unlocked. Some dude at uh, the airport turned to me and just said, 43? Oh, and like I'm asking like, flights and I'm stuff? I'm like, 43? I'm like, what? Like, I was jet, like, I was mad, and I shouldn't have been mad at all. Because if it was me, I would have wanted, and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. Do you low-key have anger issues? I think I'm bipolar. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. You can't just, I feel like it's a reactionary bipolarism. I think, it's just, I'm just a Leo. I'm a Leo too, but that doesn't mean I get shit ripped over I don't know someone asking if this is the right flight no I think it was because I got to the airport way too early because I didn't know if traffic would be bad so I got there at 3 and security wasn't even open yet I'm curious I would love to see what traveling between you and me together would be like I feel like we would be fine because I feel like we both just get things 
Well, I'm I'm a super like I'll show up to the airport super early and then yeah. be annoyed because but then I'll panic if I'm late. Have you ever missed so like I've missed a bus home from New York City and I had to wait till like eleven o'clock at night for the next bus, so I'll never be late to anything again. Yeah. It's the worst. I've never missed like a flight or a Oh, it's or miserable, like, dude. It's yeah. awful. I've had a flight canceled when I was across the country by myself. Yeah, see, that would freak me out. I almost lo- like I started crying in yeah, the airport. I would, I would freak out. And then that. I had, uh, I booked a hotel uh, at the Crown Plaza, like a five star hotel, because it was the first thing I saw. And <laughs> What's I, a three hundred dollar a night? Yeah, Crown I didn't, Plaza. I literally didn't care at that point. And then Ubered from the airport to the hotel, and I had to beg them to let me check in because I was eighteen. Did we? Oh, talk about this? right, no. You know, yeah. you didn't even say this. This was your LA trip. No, this was Seattle. Dude, you're so well versed in travel. And, I was like freaking out. I'm like, listen, chick, I'm homeless if you let me go. Like, I'll I tell don't you know what, go. one word to the wise trying to get uh, to check in early, going with, hey, listen, chick. Prob- I didn't say that. Probably I'm not going to work. I'm just saying, like, I was like, listen, I'm homeless if you let me go right now. She's like, I know it can be hard. So just if my boss was here, maybe it would be a different story, but it went, but he's not. So plus, plus it's Seattle. She's like, Welcome. Everyone's homeless so here. So here you like, go. Here's the key. I'm like, I ordered room service, got a twenty dollar pizza, and went to bed. I actually didn't sleep that night because I'm like, I'm not missing this flight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. All right. So past the New York City trip. Yeah. You want to kill everybody. Don't no, I don't. Don't say that. You can't say that anymore. <laughs> Why? Do you know how bad the world is right now, Dave? Oh, you're not actually gonna kill anybody. You couldn't kill anybody if you tried, Dave. I'm a sweetheart. Yeah, I'm, that's what I'm saying. There's no way. Speaking of that, push came to shove in class. There's no way you could kill somebody in class. What class? English class, senior year. Oh, I'm like you're out of school. Senior year. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this. Is, I like that. This is gonna be good. Senior year, this, all right, so our assignment, we were, like, writing poems, and we then just read them out loud to the class. Super simple, whatever. This, um, everybody goes, I think it's, like, the second to last kid behind me starts reading his haiku or whatever. How many syllables is a haiku? Go. I think it's, like, five, seven, seven. Seventeen. It's seventeen. Okay. Five, seven, five. Well, his was more than that. Well, so he started. That was his so first he starts. The, he starts the poem. I I remember it very vividly, and uh, it starts like. Started to turn right, didn't see him. Red light, green light, like boom, ba-da, boom, 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 or something like that. He wrote a poem <laughs> about. It's not funny, <laughs> but I like, laugh about. Yeah. He wrote a poem about how he hit. Like, he got into a car accident and killed someone. Oh. Yeah. Where do we go from here? What happened next? Like, in class? It went silent. It took everyone about, like, 30 seconds to realize what the poem was So my thing is, like, you don't live in a big town? So, like, wasn't this already, like... No, he he, he was a new kid. Uh, Oh. Yeah. That's such a new kid thing. Yeah. It was weird. That's straight out of a movie. It was. He straight murdered some guy with his car. It was an accident. Like, well, obviously. I mean, uh, no, I'm just kidding. I can't do that. Um, so, but like, what like, did the teacher do? It just kept going. What? What like, can you? Oh, what do like, you do? Okay, so who's next? And yeah. Then, like, what? What? The cheerleader is like, I'm gonna talk about my pom poms. <laughs> I'm gonna like, talk about my mom. Let's, let's do that yeah. one. Let's do that let's, one. Let's move on. To, all right, Kathy. Perfect. Yeah, what do you, you can't say anything to that. There's nothing to say. I mean, it was a well-written poem. It was. It had me in tears. See, but did anybody ask him legit? Because I feel like it's a very new kid move to... No, yeah, he did. After, you know, like how people talk, like after... And everyone, like, researches and does their... No, like, like the kid turned around, he's like, all you heard was, yeah, he died. That's rough. Yeah. He didn't seem too remorseful about it. What, what, what did, did this kid go on to be... I haven't, the whole time? Since. I haven't seen him since. Well, I would stay away from any street corner he's driving. Around. I don't know where he is now. I couldn't even tell you his name, honestly. So you once had class with a man that killed another person accidentally with the front of his car. You know someone. I know a few people. 
Where is this going? So, I, I have I have a great direction for this one. Perfect. Because you're going to get super uncomfortable. Do you have someone in your life that is your go-to murder buddy? Can we talk about this? At- 100%. No. It's not, I would- no, no. Not, I would, you could never kill anybody. I could never kill anybody. But if you did or had to and you needed an accomplice to help you get rid of the body, hide secrets, all that, do you have someone in your life that would be capable of doing that? Not at all. I do. <laughs> Perfect. I have already picked out. Do you know a man named Leroy or something? No, no. <laughs> He's the most unassuming. See, that's the key. He's the most unassuming human you will ever meet. What is he? Five foot two and like, he's like five six and like a buck thirty. Got Has it. Glasses and yeah, you just you couldn't believe it. But the reason I say this is because I think you need everyone in their life needs to know that they have someone because it's also someone you trust quite a bit. So you need to find somebody that would be your murder accomplice. That's your job for next week. And if it turns up that it's me, I'd be super proud. Dave Grande, everyone. I kind of want to be everyone's murder accomplice hypothetical. That's a good goal. That's a, that's a goal. Like, that's a goal. I mean, but that means I'm super well trusted. and I get, You could be trusted and in I other get the ways. Job done. Like, you know, no. Doing a there's, real job. There's nothing more trustworthy than saying that you're my murder buddy. Or you could just say, like, I would take a bullet for you. No, no, no. I wouldn't take a bullet for... Anybody. Anybody? No. Why? I would take a bullet for my dog. Nope. The Caesar. I would not take a bullet for, put this down in history, and like maybe this is when I find love one day, I would not take a bullet for anyone. Maybe I just want to go Because you know soon. why? <laughs> that would be stupid. Like, if, if, if I took a bullet for somebody, and then I look up and I'm dying, he'd be like, what'd you do that for? He's got another one. <laughs> it, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Guns don't come in one bullet chambers. I don't I think that's how I, I think said it. I think it's just it. a metaphor. Like, hey, man, I would do anything for you. Now, would I jump in front of a car for somebody? Maybe. I will never forget this. In Anaheim, <laughs> my friend Kelsey, we were walking down the sidewalk, and she got hit by a Honda <clears> Civic, <throat> like, very lightly. And I have never laughed so hard, because I, I was just walking, and all I heard was... Like a boom, and she's on the hood of a car, and I laughed very I've, hard, and we still. Talk I would about love today. to get run over by a car. Oh, like hit by a car, just to see. I've had my foot driven over by a car, just because or by accident. Um, accidentally, it wasn't fun, so I want to get hit by a car. Did you cry? No, I'm a man. Please, I've only cried like six times in my life. Can you name them all? Um, I I mean I add three for when like I was a baby. Okay, so what are the other three? Um. When I watch Armageddon, <laughs> and when I watch The Rookie with Dennis Quaid. In it. All movies? Only those two. Armageddon, when uh, Bruce Willis, there's a big spoiler here, when Bruce Willis hands uh, the straw to Ben Affleck, yeah. aka signing that he'll <laughs> die for him, and then uh, in The Rookie, when the grandpa gives his son the, he gets the game ball from the major leaguer, he's like, thanks for coming by. I lose it every time. Yeah. Every time. That's beautiful. I also realized, speaking of crying during movies, have you ever seen uh, A Dog's Journey? Yeah. I realized that I can't watch that because I might cry watching that. But Oh, so it'll be like a but, seven. But legitimately uh, putting, so I was talking to my buddy, dogs in real life, though, like dying, I'm super shut off about it. Not that I don't care, but like for some reason, real life, not as sad as a movie. Fair <laughs> Is that enough. bad? I am a legend when the dog died. What are you talking about? I hate I Am Legend. Okay. You know why? Why? I'm out on that. Like, if if the dog dies, I'd be like, good for him. He's out of this horrible world. It was an awful world, and why was he trying to survive so hard? To, f- like... Bragging rights? To because who? it was like it was kind of like a zombie type thing where he was trying to find the, the uh, cure. cure. Yeah. So there was other people out there, per se, but, like, I'm just out. I'm out. I would I'm be done. done. Like, I'd be the first one to go. Deuces. I don't want to turn into a zombie, but like I'm out. Yeah, actually, I'd want to turn into a zombie. That'd be pretty dope. How many people would get to say that they've been a zombie? None, because they can't talk. You just idiot. like saying like I would love to be abducted by aliens. I no. Because like, how many people can say that they've done that? Dude, that changes you, man. Yeah, something needs to change here. 
And if it's that, so be it. I feel it. like you'd be so willing if the aliens came. Hell yeah, I would. You'd be like, uh, finally. Uh, Jesus, where have you been? I've been sending the signals yeah. for years. God. Yeah, I'd be down for that. And they'd all be in, like, hoodies that say Supreme on them. Yeah. That, is that your dream scenario? No, I'm not a fan of Supreme. I just resell it. I don't get that either. I made a lot of money from Supreme. Of course you did. All right. I'm a businessman, Dave. What do we want to do next? Uh, do you have any stories? Well, we can go over my crappy date. Dave went on a or date. We can Let's do, continue this story. Talk, we can talk about old people. Let's talk about the date. People want to hear it. All right. I want to hear it. I haven't heard anything about it. You yeah, I know. This. Uh, I, I, didn't I text you right after and went, uh, great content? Yeah, you're like, great content. Because last week we signed off with, it's either going to be like a, whole, a great thing. Love, yeah, or, or it's going to be content. great content. So Looks like we got the content aspect. It's a content. Uh... <laughs> Went on a date. It was pretty nice, real chill, and talked the whole time, which is pretty deceiving because I can also talk to like a wall for two hours. For sure. Any awkward silences? No. Like, if anything, there was awkward not silences. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just kept you talking. You talk over she, her? She kept talking. We both were, it seemed like we were both very nervous. You have she, another podcast, buddy? Yeah. Well, she was super excited that I did a podcast. I oh, think that was part of my it. appeal. And then she's like, what's your podcast about? And I was like, absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. And she was like, oh. Like a very like. Why would you say uh, that? We talk about so much shit. But it's it's like, it's a show about nothing. It's like old Seinfeld. It's a show. It's a show it's about, about our nothing. lives. But it's, you, a, it's a blog. If you think, it's, or like a personal diary. If you call this thing a personal diary, I'm out. I'm out. Can we talk about uh, can change the time of the podcast today for a little bit? Yeah. And I said, love you, man. <laughs> and I said no. You said no. Because it was weird. Whatever. Because it wasn't the time to say I love you. It just wasn't. Okay. I literally said, okay. And you're like, love you. And I'm like, no. Sure. Definitely not. I'm All out right. on that. Keep going with the, so, with the date. So, like, yeah, she was super disappointed in the fact that our podcast isn't, like, Concentrated on something actually interesting. We are even not though act- yeah, even though not. it is, it's you and me. Yeah. Um. So that was funny. And then I was like, I I told her that she's on the podcast. I was like, we've been talking about you, Meredith. And she's like, oh. And she said she was gonna listen. She Granted, this did. was after the date. Like, or she said after the date that she would listen. I don't think she did because I also don't think I'll ever hear back from her because uh, date went pretty well and. Uh, Everyone knows the awkward part of a first date is, like, what's going to happen at the end. Because that's... Handshake, hug, hand hug, right. I don't know. I'm definitely not going to handshake it. The- hand, hand hug, though, very strong. Did you hand hug? No. I, uh. I'll, I'll get to it. Oh, not until marriage? So, yeah, oh, oh I'm super hand hugged a- after marriage. Okay. But my thing is, <laughs> she parked her car directly in front of the door of the restaurant so there was a legitimate three-step process to her car. So there was not only was there panic of what does this date end with, but I have three steps to figure that out. Yeah. So I'm on the edge of my seat. Three steps in, I was like, wow, you parked close. Ha, ha, ha. Like, whatever. LMAO. And she was like, yeah, this is, like, this is a bad move. And then she goes, where's your car? And I go, oh, it's that truck over there with those obnoxious orange camo seats. Dead silence. You need to fix the camera. Dead silence. She just goes, oh. And I go, what? And she goes, I hate camo. And I'm like, ah. And I like didn't, I don't know why I think it was the panic of like what's going to happen right now. That I was just like, oh. Well, yeah, they're really obnoxious. And she's like, no, like I really hate camo. And I go, Okay, this like is weird. It, it was a very strong. I end. feel weird. And then she looked, and I'm like, "Do you need to see them?" And she's like, "I feel like I do." And I was like, "Okay." Oh, and so shoot, yeah, no, but not in a good way. Like uh, it was like a, I don't know. I might have read this whole thing wrong. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. May, maybe it was a. Maybe she was like, "Oh, I gotta see him." I don't know. I but have to. I hope I opened him up, and she was just like. Oh my god! And I was just like, uh, I sorry, but I was like laughing to myself because I talked to someone at work the other day and I explained this, and he's like, I'm not gonna lie, even if I didn't know you, I feel like within ten minutes of meeting you, I'd be like, this guy definitely has something camo related in his life. It's generally, 
I feel like it's 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 just on. <laughs> it's who this, you are. Yeah, like it's just on here. And I was also laughing because not only do I have camo seats, I have like <laughs> I have a weird leopard print microphone as a ornament. <laughs> like, of course you do. Yeah, because I'm just weird and like yeah. that's who I am. And I have a bunch of camo hats on the floor. <laughs> so I was just like, uh, and then like, so she kind of poo-pooed that and shit on it. And I was like, oh, okay. And I felt super awkward. Yeah, I would too. And I then I hammered it out with this line. Well, I thought this was going great until now. <laughs> like, I, I'm not, I'm not delicate at all. Like, I can I'm tell. Not, I'm not gentle with any of my words. I'm hurt. And also throughout the date. So the other thing that was kept coming up is I felt like. Anything at one point during the date, I don't know if this was good or bad. This is kind of, she goes, I'm wor- sometimes I'm scared of what's gonna come out of your mouth next. <laughs> this is your first time <laughs> yeah. meeting. She had some very strong reactions to things I was saying, where I'm just very like, I'm strong, but I, I'm very mellow about yeah. my reactions. So, yeah, I don't think I didn't <laughs> talk to her, and I don't think we ever will again. You haven't talked since, no, because I don't, I feel like an idiot because all after the I, after I said the comment of like, oh, this is great until then, she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I totally made fun of, um, I like your shoes. And it was like super awkward. She's like, uh, uh, and I was like, uh, okay. And then I was like, I'm just going to go. <laughs> like I you literally, saw. yeah, cause I didn't know it was the, the good first date ended by total awkwardness in the last five, 10 minutes to the point where like, have you ever just got sat down in a vehicle or anywhere and you just look and you just kind of like look out and you just start laughing? Yeah. <laughs> That's literally where I was at. I was like, was this real life? Like, yeah. I wish there was a camera to both cringe and watch it. That's why I should have been there. And just laugh. And I also, we were like the last ones at the bar or the restaurant, whatever. And I was hoping that everyone was watching because they definitely got the funniest show because yeah. it was like, it was just, it was horrible. And uh, so, yeah, Damn. I'm back to not doing first dates. I'm, out, I'm out on first dates. I'm, I like meeting people at a bar and that's oh, like the not, first you're, date. You're off of Hinge? Yeah, I haven't really been back on it. All right. But yeah, like, we had one bad experience and that's it. I, I'm back to meet people at a bar, hang out with them then, and see if I want to hang out with them again. For sure. You know why? Because at a bar... You hang out for long enough, and it's late in the night. You get all that first date awkwardness of what's going to happen done right then and there. Sick, man. And I am not an adult enough, apparently, to make a move on the first date because I'm just anxiety ridden. Hell yeah, man. Oh, God, dude. Welcome to the club. (laughs) So this is going to get, I don't know, this will be my last comment of this. And I said I came into work the next day, and I was just laughing to somebody. I go... I swear I'm I'm good at the the physicalness. I'm good at the sex. But getting to that apparently is really difficult for me. Yeah. So uh yeah, 25 is treating me very well. Hell yeah, man. In the past month or two. So now it's your turn. We're going to get you on a date. Dave, I don't think it's, I haven't talked to a a fucking person in a long time. It's going to happen, dude. Set me up. Now stall for 2 seconds while I drink water. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. Dave is drinking water. He's about to swallow, and he's back. That was beautiful. Thank you. That was amazing. You should be an announcer. I should. I One of my goals is to um, be like a commentator for an MMA fight. Really? I want to do that really bad. I want to be like Joe Rogan. Do you like watch MMA? I used to. I used to spend a lot of money on pay-per-views. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. I never knew that. Really? I want now I want to get you, I'm going to I'm going to find a way to get you to commentate some. Would I want to do it. Would you commentate wrestling? Yeah. Okay, cuz yeah. I know a guy that does that. I want to do it. Probably really get that. Like, I want to be in the booth and like like doing all that. All right. That would be fun. Next week when we <clears throat> so next week we're going to have that wrestler in. I'm down. And we're going to interview and we're going to put some footage up of him wrestling and you're going to do the play by play. Hell yeah. It's going to be, be like great. my practice. But you have to come with like certain adjectives. You have some, like the word mean? slobber knocker. Slobber knocker. Yeah. Like when everyone's, it's just straight carnage in the ring. You have oh, to go, oh, this is a slobber, slobber knocker. knocker. Huh. Yeah. All right. My slobber knockers no. are on fire. That's weird, dude. Uh, Don't do that on a first date. Sorry. I also told her I had tattoos, like stupid tattoos. You do. And she was like, oh. And I was like, yeah. 
So, Dave, if she can't appreciate your stupid tattoos, I think I'm just a, I think you. I'm just a little too strong of a personality, generally for the entire population. But I think you're fine. Definitely for that night. I'm just waiting for someone to to find me that accepts that I am batshit crazy it's in a good happen. way. You're gonna find someone to even you out. I feel like that's what's gonna happen. See, I need. I've I've found someone that evened me out, and it wasn't necessarily good. I need it evening, uh, but it will allow me to go crazy, because I will totally stay in my room and watch yeah. Netflix for like a week long with my girlfriend or something. But I need someone that will be like, "Let's go out," because otherwise, I get in like a lull of like I just don't want to see people. Shockingly enough, I am weirdly introverted, even though I'm loud and obnoxious. The best way to explain it is I have. A huge extrovert personality with partnered with crippling anxiety. It's a great time. Yeah. Twenty five is really fun. I'm Which brings me to, it. to my next thing. Shit. Old people. Okay, let's talk about it. I, I was feel like at, Dave had a run in with an old person. I was at my grandfather's birthday party mm-hmm. and love my grandparents. My uh, grandma on my dad's side, she's my person. Like you know how everyone has a person. Yeah, she's my person because. I feel like my dad is her favorite child, which means I'm her favorite grandchild because me and my dad are pretty much the same. And she didn't have to deal with all my BS. Mm -hmm. So, like, just all the good things she gets out of me. So she loves me. And I'm going to be her personal chauffeur to UConn for her alumni thing. She's, like, 80, and she still goes up to UConn for, like, alumni stuff. But it means I get to drive her because it's late at night and she can't drive at night. So it's great. But we were at my grandpa's birthday, and my grandpa has always had something to say, obviously. It's come to trip down to me. Oh, yeah. But he's always had something to say, and I'm curious at what point in life we all think, like, old people hit that, like, you know what? I'm going to say whatever I want, and I don't care. I feel like it depends on what, where you're at in life. But, like, is it a buildup of, like, you've given a shit for so long that it breaks? Or do do you just look around and you're like... You know what? I feel like it's a fast break. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, like, when you're 50, and, oh, God, I love that guy. He's walked by, like, seven times. Oh, he, he, so, this is going to be super inside about the studio, but it's a great topic. We've counted how many times he walks past the window. He does production here, Uh, and he sits in a studio back there. They put a printer in his office so he didn't have to go to the printer in the other office, and he still goes and prints there just so he can walk around. That's tight. We have we had a meeting, and he just wants to see what's going on, and we had, like, a clicker. He walked by the meeting 25 times in an hour. That's awesome. He's doing production, which means he's on a computer doing whatever. There's no need for him to be walking around. But he None. still does, yeah. And he's, like, here 60 hours of the week, and he's, like, the hardest worker. He doesn't do it. And he's a grumpy old man. It's Should I blur awesome. his face? No, I don't care. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're boys. Um, Hell yeah. So yeah, like I want to, I just, oh, I wish we had an old person. But like. I feel like it's a fast break to the, to, to me. Is it like, oh, you're 60 and you're just like, whatever, I'm done. But like 60 doesn't seem that old I to me I feel like anymore. it's like 55. No, because my dad's 55 and I mean, he has a lot to say, but it's not like. I haven't met a 55 year old in a long old. time, so I don't know. Your mother's like 70. Oh, yeah, you're right. But, uh, just kidding. Um, That's my thing is like, what constitutes it? Is it just a no given shit attitude? I think. I feel like it's the same way where old people either can't stop from farting or they don't care about farting in front of other people. You've you've ever been around that? Yeah, I worked, uh, I had to do like a, what is it called? A community service thing at a (laughs) retirement home. Yeah. And I, one of them was like, excuse me, ma'am, can you get me a soda from the vending machine? They were talking to me. I love it. I love when old people call young people, like, the wrong gender. Yeah. Excuse me, young woman. I'm, I wish you turned I'm, around. You're not wrong. <laughs> I wish you turned around and yelled at her, how dare you assume my gender? I'm like, I'm like y- at the time, I probably looked like, I probably looked like a girl. <laughs> I once worked at a retirement home. You want to hear my shittiness of working at a retirement home? Yeah. So back in my uh, my youth, I took a class to be a teacher. Like a few, it was called Future Teachers and Nurses. It was like a UConn credit course, and so you did three semesters of interning as a teacher, and then you had to do one semester as like a 
a nurse type thing. So working in a hospital, anything like interning, community hours, I chose to do it at the old folks home in my town. Bad choice. Great choice because I'm fantastic with old people. They're so mean. You want to know why I'm fantastic with old people? Because I tell them how much they suck. The key with old people is to be like, man, you look like shit today or looking really old, Mr. Henderson, or you can't push yourself around in a wheelchair. They eat that shit up. They love it because like all day they're like, are you okay? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, dude, I'm not dead. I'm just old. Like I, I still know what's going on. Stop treating me like a child. So I like to fuck with them. I get it. So I used to, my job when I used to do my hours was to push them around in wheelchairs, which if you could imagine is not a good job. They're for probably me. screaming. Oh yeah, yeah, dude. I got yelled at so much by the person yeah. that was like in charge of me because she's like, you can't, you can't like run with them. <laughs> like you can't go fast. <laughs> You're bumping them into walls. I'm like, they love it. They, this is NASCAR. No, the old he folks loves home. it. And then- the best thing was I was also in charge of doing bingo. Of course you were. Obviously, I had this sultry, beautiful voice, which I don't talk about enough because I actually don't like my voice, but I know that it's straight butter because it's just got that. Mm. That's like me. Like, I don't watch my videos back. Right. I mean, and like, you're, just can't. you're goddamn beautiful. So hey. I used to do bingo, and I had more than one old woman come up to me. And I don't know if you know this, but old women like to pinch. And they'd come and like pinch me Ooh. around the tuchus area. Did you just call it a tuchus? Yeah, well, uh, old people. And she'd be like, you have such a sexy bingo voice. And I'm like, thanks, thank Dolores. You, Appreciate it. Thanks, Meredith. Meredith was there? <laughs> yeah. No. Damn. So uh, needless to say, I was a big hit at the bingo and the uh, wheelchair lounge. Now this is the shitty part of it. <laughs> After my time was done there for like my class and my credit, I stopped looking at my email and they kept emailing me about no. this one certain guy that I used to play checkers with. And I looked and it was like three months worth of emails being like, so-and-so keeps asking if you'll come back and play checkers. It'd be really nice if you'd come and play checkers. This yeah. and, that. and so now all I ever think is like after those three months, did they give up or did he die? You have, we have to go find out. And I'll never know, and I never want to know, because oh. he sucked at checkers. <laughs> he kicked his ass. Oh, he was awful. Yeah. For all those years of practice, he sucked. Mm. And that's my retirement home story. Great story. I loved it. Am I too strong a personality? No. Do I need... See, I think what I'm struggling with... Maybe you with, are, and that's probably why... Maybe that's why we get along. I'm. I feel like I'm. Maybe str- I just don't notice it. I feel like I'm struggling with the fact that I don't know how to ease into anything. You just like have to jump right in. I'm. I. I think the problem with me is so. I'm not. I'm not mysterious in any way, shape, or form. For sure. I am. Face value, what you see, I will tell you anything. If you ask me anything, I will tell you, and I don't even need to know you, which I feel like doesn't help me because I feel like I need to be mysterious and closed off i'm too open i like being i feel like life is way better when no one knows what you're doing see but i just like to get everything out on the table so everyone knows what everyone's dealing no, with. no 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 you got it so much easier you got to keep it behind so when it comes out it's like this huge bah, what you did what you saw meredith again you did what yeah, low key, me and Meredith are like dating hardcore. I knew it. No, definitely not. You see, that's why I, that's why I keep everything. Like, I didn't tell any. I don't tell anyone what, where I am or like what I'm doing. Cause see, and I'm super public about anything. They don't. I don't care if the people know, as long as I know. As long as you know. There was so, a rumor that I was dating my cousin, in like middle school. Is she hot? No, it's my cousin. <laughs> was it a first cousin or a second cousin? I think it's like a, I don't know. Is don't it know even that, is it even related or is it like a marriage? It, it's it's like a yeah. Okay, so it's is like she dozen. hot? No. Oh, well that's a bummer. Dave, it's like all right. Cousins and by I, marriage I just, aren't a thing. The dude. point is, dude, I just didn't calm, calm down. Am I peaking? No, you're fine, but you need to relax. But the point is, I just didn't care, because as long as I know that I'm not dating my cousin, I'm fine. <laughs> that seems like the shittiest way to explain to me that I should be mysterious. I don't know. Dave, just, as long as you know you're not dating your cousin, who cares who doesn't know? Blah, 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 blah. I'm on a me on TV. <laughs> Radio. Right. 
So it's that time again where we, Is it need, our, to, we need to stop shit. sucking. Dude, I tell you. I told you, I can talk to a by. wall for two hours. I can get through a 45-minute podcast. Damn. Ease. I am so Granted, we don't, know if, we don't know if any of the content was any good, but hey, nope. that's for you to decide and not me. What is the name of this? I, saying, I forgot. Uh, uh, stay, st- woke. stay Woke. Stay Woke, woke fam. fam. Stay Woke Children. Do you have one today? Yes. Okay. Hammer it out, dude. Stay Woke. Stay Woke. <laughs> YouTube is not a good job to have. <laughs> What? <laughs> to all you 11 year old vloggers, I'm not saying don't do it, but don't think you're get, like, I, it's a one in a million chance. I've been shot down so many times, I'm just dead inside when it comes to YouTube as a job. Where did this come from? I don't know. I was thinking about it. So, like, what do you mean YouTube as a job? Because there's so many, this like, is an old, old time question. There's so right many, t- like, 10 year olds that say that to their teachers, like, I want to be a YouTuber when I grow up because that's all they see. See, but this goes back to what we talked about last week. Like, there's there's a huge problem with, like, I'd even, you were kind of, like, on the beginning of it, but, like, I can't imagine being 12, 10, 11 yeah. now because being a YouTuber is a legitimate, like, thought process, and yeah. that seems batshit crazy to me. Cause it is. It's a crazy, it's a crazy world. Because you're right, it's not, it's not like oh, like oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a. It vlogger. doesn't happen overnight. Like, and I feel like it's so obnoxious because, and we've talked about this, like a lot of YouTube videos, which bothers me, aren't like real. They're not real content, oh, no. and it's all set up. So the fact that you have to go do that, and you have to have, I, I put it this way, as a YouTuber, you have to have some serious balls and also be seriously stupid. To really get famous doing some of the stuff they do. It's crazy. Like, some of the people that are huge, at least that I know of, I feel like are idiots. Yeah. And all, not are also, right. like, three steps away from getting arrested at all times. Yeah, always. Which is not a good way to be. That's not fun. And I'm not someone that is, like, super responsible or whatever, but living three steps away from the law with your videos is not a good way to go. No. No, not So your stay woke is don't be a YouTuber as a job. Not say- uh, I'm saying, like, maybe you're just interested in making videos. That's, I found that out, I thought, because, like, maybe, maybe, like, two years ago, maybe, like, a year and a half ago, I was doing YouTube, like, as a job for, like, three months, and that's the furthest I got. And what does that it. part take? You were just making videos constantly and I was coming doing, up with I content? I was doing brand deals like a motherfucker. Huh. So it's all about getting like sponsorships and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, and I, I didn't have to do anything else. Like one video a week. Were you making money? Yeah, it was stupid. Then why are you not doing that? I don't like it. But were you making like decent money? For a seventeen-year-old, yeah. Huh. I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. No, you're not. Watch me. You're on it right you now. You think my content wouldn't be bomb? I think it would be great. We're doing it right now. I'm going to I'm gonna do a video about me jumping in a, a fountain in the middle of Hartford. Okay. And it's going to be like, look my, at me in a fountain. I'll film it. And, and that's can, YouTube, dude. Yeah. Ta-da. Dave got arrested for jumping in a fountain. He did what? Aww. What? Aww. Okay, what's your stay woke, fam? Dream big. For sure, man. Well, we're going to go the opposite today. Oh, I just shot people down. I'm yeah. not saying do it for fun, but like... It's hard. It's hard as fuck, <laughs> just like anything else in this world. Listen, if you can't dream it, it ain't going to happen. That's I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't bring one today, so this is me bullshitting. I've been faking it till I make it. Yeah. So to, uh, Still today. I haven't made it. I'm still faking it. Also, figure out if that dream is actually what you want. Because it's super easy to be like, I want to do this, and then you put it down on paper of like what it actually entails. Like, I've hit a big point recently where I love what I'm doing, but you know what I miss doing? I miss having my nights to play softball. It's very random and a very oldie-timey type thing, but now that I'm past my career of playing baseball, and I like to play slow-pitch softball with, like, my my friends and stuff. go play softball. And I don't do that because I always am working at night, and I have my other gigs to make money. And so you have to accept that in order to attain your dream, you might have to give up other things, oh, including yeah. things that you like. Yeah. So, dream big and know that your dream might suck. Dave Grande, everyone. It's actually Grandy. And also... What? Yeah, it's always been Grandy. Grandy? Fun fact. 
Ariana Grande is actually Ariana Grande as well. Boom, motherfucker! Have you met Ariana? Uh, no, but I saw a recent interview, and I don't know why I saw it, because I don't care, but she was like, they were asking her if she would take Pete Davidson's name, and he was like, would you be Ariana Grande Davidson, blah, 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 and she's like, no, I'd probably just keep Grandy, like, I'd keep Ariana Grande, and, like, it was so subtle, but I was like, that's me, that's me, we're wow. related. You might be, probably down the line. I don't want to be, though. Like, you really? know how you didn't want to be dating your cousin? If Ariana Grande Grande was my cousin through marriage, I would be dating her. In a heartbeat, we're titling this podcast, Dating My Cousin? What? (laughs) Dave dates Ariana Grande? What? What? He did what? They'll have to stay tuned to the 45-minute mark to just hear Just hear this. Are we at 45 minutes? Holy shit. We killed it, buddy. Damn, man. You're welcome. Thank you. My shoulders are so broad. I just carry this big team. <laughs> All right, so we're never doing this on a Monday again. I think this was very successful. Yeah, I don't know if anything was interesting or not. I but don't. I couldn't. Re- I couldn't tell you how we started this off. Who cares? All right, so uh, this was episode three <clears throat> of Intern and Son in the books. Hell yeah! We're still gonna put it up Tuesdays. Yes. Yeah, tomorrow. I have to edit this by the end of the night because I have something to do tomorrow. Dude, you're such a hard worker. Dude, last week was bad. I thought I was gonna end my shit. I had nothing to do. Okay, it's time for us to be done. Oh, We can't talk about that on the podcast. All right, folks. Thanks for listening. If you made it this far, kudos. Have a lovely uh, week, and we'll see you back next week for episode four and possibly an interview with a wrestler. Yeah. Big stuff. Stay woke, fam. Deuces. Peace.